and Stefani leads our intercession and um, Stefani is sincere about purity in worship and in prayer and in the word. So that's Stefani, if you don't know her, but we thank you Stefani for your readiness to come and share this morning and yeah, we trust God to speak to us through what you've got to share. Thank you, Matthew. Um, the Holy Spirit is going to fall, so I'm already going to go for the tomato box. Um, yeah, I mean, so I'm Stefani, and um, I'll be speaking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit this morning. I th I'm, I'm very passionate about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and mainly because of the source of them, which is... Your worship just explained it to us, so there's not much for me to explain, but that it is the Holy Spirit himself who embodies these gifts um, and is the source of these gifts. And we forget that the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity, as we said. So he's part of God the Father, he's part of Jesus Christ, meaning he's part of the Trinity, meaning when we say the Holy Spirit works in us or lives in us, then it is the Holy God himself who lives in us. It is Jesus who lives in us. And this is vast and it's huge. And we neglect the Holy Spirit. We neglect his presence. Um, so that's why I'm so passionate about the gifts. It just manifests in the mind like he is here. <laughs> Can't you see? Um, so that, that's just why I'm so passionate about it. Um, I just wanted to give a quick recap. But um, we can go to the next deal. I think Matthew actually shared... The recap, but I just want to emphasize that Andres, when he mentioned about the ministry gifts, that it's continual in nature. So Jesus gave those uh, those five gifts, and then Ruth gave us the Father gifts, and they are um, we usually born with these. And and Father gave him in His mercy, and when we walk in it, it's a response to His mercy. And then the gifts I'll be speaking about, they are um, they more like in moments which the Holy Spirit manifests Himself. Um, so they are brief and temporary in nature. And all these gifts have been given to the body, which we are all members of. And so we all can receive all of these different ones. I quickly just um, want to pray for us before we go any further. Yeah, thank you, Father, that you've already met with us, Lord. <laughs> thank you that your spirit is so present among us, Lord. Thank you for the words that you've given, Lord. We receive them by heart, Lord. We receive the freedom, the strings being cut, Lord. We just thank you that your spirit is alive in us, Lord. And, yeah, that you came close, Lord Jesus, and that you left us the spirit so that you could remain close, Lord. Oh, thank you that you've placed everlasting life through your spirit in us, Lord. Thank you for that, Lord Jesus. Just open our minds, Lord. Open our spirits to receive you, Lord, and what you bring and give, Lord. Um, freely, Lord. Amen. Amen. I want you also to just relax, sit back. This is not a thing you have to work for, or this is really a receiving, something God does in our spirits. Um, so I just want... Um, Truths. The next slide is, um, this is just a foundation. We need to believe this and to see this um, before we go into the gifts. This is just three truths that I think is, is foundational when, when we're going to look at the gifts and the Holy Spirit. So the first one is that God is a good father who gives good gifts. So we must believe that he is that and that he good gives, gives good gifts. Um, he Jesus said that those who believe in him drinks from him and out of them will flow rivers of living water. So out of us, if we are believers, then the rivers of living water should flow from our lives. And John the Baptist says that he baptized with water, but the one coming after him with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And it's Jesus who baptizes us with the Holy Spirit and fire. Um, yes, let's just move. Now we'll look at the... Um, main scripture for this week, which is in 1 Corinthians 12. Concerning the spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord, except in the Holy Spirit. Um, now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. Varieties of service, but the same Lord. 
varieties of activities, but the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. And now he just lists the gifts. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. To another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healings by one Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another the ability to distinguish between Spirits. And to another various kinds of tongues. And to another the interpretation of tongues. So all these are empowered by one and the same spirit who apportions to each. Um, quite a lengthy scripture. I just like that first part. That word that was bringing when you were pagan you were led away to idols, mute idols. That just emphasizes that we were attached to strings. But Christ <laughs> tells us we are set apart and free. And the strings are gone because we are not led away to idols anymore. Um, just something that helped me to understand the spiritual gifts a bit better is um, actually the Greek word, um, that pneumatica, that actually it just means that it's the opposite, so it's non-carnal, so it's the opposite of carnality. And this is a bit blunt, the definition, but I do want us to, to see it for what it is, because um, God created us for the opposite created us for more. He didn't create us only. So um, carnal would mean fleshly, and it comes from the word actually meat. So to be carnally minded is to live after the things that animals live, uh, live for, under the control of animal appetites. So following the desires and appetites of a mere animal. And that God, that's why God opposes it so much, That because that's not what he created. It says they, that the carnal mind is enmity actually against God. Because God created us as spirit in his image to connect with him. Um, not merely as otherwise he would have made us a dog and a cat. <laughs> um, but he didn't. And there's actually Derek Prince in one of his sermons, he's, he gives this warning. He said there's a great danger. We don't realize how great the danger is that's entering the church and that it is actually um, carnality. So we should, we should in our own lives stand against it and, and fend against it. Um, to become carnally minded, but rather as Paul encourages us to walk by the Spirit. Um, so it goes on to say then that it's supernatural, um, not natural or done in man's ability. So this is special abilities. Uh, they are brief and temporary in nature. So given to all believers to contribute to the common good of others. So it's for other people and the church. And it's empowered by one and the same spirit as we see in the scripture. The same spirit. One spirit gives from the same. So it's one source who gives all these gifts. Um, and the main purpose of this would be to point people to Jesus. And show them the love of Christ. And also to glorify the Father. And to reconcile people back to the Father. So remember when we walk in these gifts that this is the purpose. It, it shows people the love of Christ. So who don't want to show <laughs> Jesus, uh, Jesus' love to people? Um, yeah, then we'll just quickly look at some valuable principles that I've been taught, but also learn to walk in. Um, I'm just going to list five, but because there's more, but I think the most important one would be love. Um, to always check our hearts before we pray for someone that, that love is in our hearts. Um, the motivation of our hearts should be that we love this person. So when you're trusting for a word for someone or praying for someone for healing, allow the Lord to, to pour that love into your heart for that person. Because it's about that person. And spiritual gifts, um, when the Holy Spirit moves, he draws people unto Christ. So it's always about Jesus. It's not about the gift even or about us. It's about exalting Jesus. Um, so it's not to esteem men or impress flesh. It's not medals we wear on a Sunday morning. It's rather you can see it as a tool um, that God gives us for a certain task. This is also not something we possess. We actually use it and we freely give it away as water. Um, this one is a very important one for me. I had to deal with it <laughs> recently. Very, um, But then God just came to me. So abiding the presence of God, that's very important in, in administering the gifts. It will always be presence before power. Um, there's a scripture where, where the 
um, those who were casting out demons said, Lord, but we cast out demons, we healed the sick, we did all these things in your name. And then Jesus said, you say to me, Lord, Lord, but I do not know you. And then we asked the question, but why they did all these things? And there Jesus just emphasized, it's, it's an abiding in me, it's a moment by moment that you're walking with me and doing this. And so we must know the Lord, we must walk with him, and then he leads us to these things. Um, so we move where we experience the conviction of the Holy Spirit, and then we join him. Because the Holy Spirit and God knows already who's struggling, or who has the illness, or what is going on. Um, so this is to remember, it's not a backpack of power supply that we take out, and then we don't, when we don't need it. It's rather a moment by moment. Um, Reinhard Bonko also says it's a God is the reservoir, and we are only the faucet. So if you can keep that in mind. And then the last two is obedience and humility. So obedience, your stepping out in the gifts would always require you to, to step out in obedience. You're going to have to lift your arm, or you're going to have to use your mouth, or you're going to have to obey. Um, and sometimes in that moment, love fills your heart for that person. Um, we, and you're anyway so overwhelmed too. So it's to see from God's perspective, not our own. It's always an action or a step, as I said. And in Matthew 10, verse 7, we actually see the command Jesus gave. So as you preach, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons. This is a commandment Jesus gave us. Um, so we should walk in it. And humility is the last one that God desires a broken and contrite spirit. And remember that he gives power to the weak. So you don't have to be on a certain level to do these things. It's his power flowing through us. It doesn't have really much to do with you other than you becoming available, opening your heart for him to flow through you. Um, and to remember, sometimes we're filled with fear or fear of man and you don't want to now approach this person. But to remember that people are actually hungry for God. I think we forget that, that people actually desire to be met by God and to see him and to experience his love. Um, I am the feel. Okay, just the analogy while I was preparing for this, um, I was praying and it's a very simple, so I don't even want to, because it, it, it's, it's so simplistic that it doesn't um, carry the weight and the glory of what I want to explain, because God is this endless source. He's not only a battery. So think of God as an endless source of supply. He's forever full, forever flowing. But in this scenario, what I saw was a battery supply which represents him we being the wires and then the church or the person who's receiving the healing is the light bulb and then what i highlighted there is the two connection points so either sometimes we're very connected with god we're experiencing his presence but there's no connection or outflow and and what happens actually is people don't receive light and and the kingdom isn't established and it doesn't go forth so it's only us in our bubble and then on the other end end will be maybe you're connected to the light but again there's no light because the power source is left somewhere <laughs> so for us to to treasure both these connections to ask him to fill us and to stay close to us and to also have a heart for for his people and his church where he wants to to bring forth these gifts so that's just a quick analogy and then i'm going over to the gifts now <laughs> Um, but keep that in mind and, and go back to God with, with this connection point where you might feel disconnected. Um, the gifts. So now I just want you to open yourself up. Some of you have received gifts. Some of you have walked maybe a while back, not anymore, or you're still walking in them. Or you're actually trusting God for new ones for the season you're in or whatever it might be. So open yourself to let the Holy Spirit highlight, because I trust him to highlight to us, to say, this is what I have for you. You only need to desire this <laughs> to receive it. So that's what I'm trusting for. So as I go through it, don't, this is a lot of information, but don't see it as information. Allow him to speak in certain gifts to you. Um, it's okay if you don't get everything or if you miss three of the gifts, it's okay. Um, you can get the slides by me. But rather be open to him. So the first one, so some teachers just divide them into three categories. Just helps us. So the first one is revelation gifts. And then the power gifts and the inspirational gifts. And under these three is three gifts. So under the revelation gifts, we have the word of wisdom. 
then you'll see Nick, in brackets, I've just placed a word, that's my own word, that's not a definition or a, <laughs> it's just easy to remember. So word of wisdom, I have way or skill. So word of wisdom is usually, it's directive. So it's supernatural revelation to give direction. In Ecclesiastes 10 verse 10, it says, if the ax is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. But wisdom brings success, is profitable to direct. So the scenario would be where three or four leaders are meeting or families meeting together. They're trusting God for direction forward, for a way forward. Um, they don't want to go on just as they've been going on for five years. Or whatever. And then they pray and God actually gives a word of wisdom or direction and shows them. And that, that also brings God's purposes to pass and God moves us and directs us in this way. So it's the divine purpose and plan in the mind and the will of God. The second one is word of knowledge. I call them the informed ones. So this has to do with information. Sometimes we get confused. What is a word of wisdom and what is a word of knowledge? Um, so word of wisdom we see is directive where knowledge would be information that God impart, imparts to you supernaturally that you wouldn't have known any other way about a person. Um, so we see this in Acts where Peter with Ananias and Sapphira where they sold the property and they kept back a portion. Um, and the Holy Spirit showed Peter that this happened so he could call on them and then the Lord dealt with them and fear actually filled the church. But this would also be sometimes you hear people walking into a restaurant and they see a waiter and the waiter has a back pain or a headache and the person experienced the waiter as a headache. And then they can go up and say, do you have pain anywhere? And they can actually pray for that person because that's the way the Holy Spirit just points out and gives us information. It's a very valuable gift, um, especially also praying for people for healing. And then the last one in this category is the discerning of spirits. I call them the unveilers. This is more a very cool gift. I wish I had more of it because of the... It protects from deception. It actually keeps the church safe and it keeps people safe. So I, I have great value for this gift. It's the ability to um, identify and distinguish between various kinds of spirits, not, not just not one. So it, they are usually the people who lift the veil. They can see the spiritual realm better. Um, it, they are also enabled to see as God sees and they protect from deception. As I said, then the next slide. So it's not just for them to discern between people with this gift, yeah, they don't only discern evil spirits. So they actually f first and most important discern the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God. So they can sense where the Holy Spirit is moving and, and so. And then angels, they can also discern, thirdly, demons or unclean spirits, like with Paul and Silas with that girl that had the spirit of divination in Acts 16, which they then cast out. So the evil spirits or spirit of Satan, and then the human spirit is the fourth one, which is a soulish spirit. It's just our soul desires and things, which they can also discern if it's the Holy Spirit or just someone's soulish prayers now or heart. <laughs> then we move to the second category. This is the power gifts. So you're all still with me. Open yourself up. Maybe an important thing about the gifts is also to desire them. So, um, you know, allow that desire to be stirred in your heart. So the gift of faith, I call them the movers because they move the mountains. They have a supernatural ability to, um, you know, it's above human level. So it's supernatural faith to accomplish um, God's purposes. This is also the stepping stone for the other two gifts, which is miracle and healings. So faith is very important there. We see in Mark 11, where Jesus cursed the fig tree, actually. And after that, he told his disciples to have faith in God and not be shakable. But that's in the English. In the Greek, it actually says to have the faith of God. And that's where the authority lies. Because we see when Jesus did, um, when Jesus did a... Um, yeah, he cast out the spirit and he actually just, in Matthew 8, he actually just used one word to cast out the spirit. Um, and Peter, when he prayed for Tabitha, he actually just said, Tabitha, rise. Because the authority was, it was God's faith that he was accessing, not his own faith. Um, so that's what makes this gift so powerful for me. Gert was praying in the hospitals. 
is accessing God's faith, not his own. Um, but this is a, a bigger portion of faith, yeah. The gift of healing. So this is the, yeah, the healing power of God that flows through a body into a person that's receiving the, the healing or the person who is sick. So this always relates to sickness and releasing health. Um, we see Jesus' ministry full of healing people. Um, and he, he desires that we do that as well. Uh, scripture that's very close to my heart is Mark 5, where the lady had the discharge of blood. And she touched the garment of Jesus. And then she was immediately healed. And Jesus asked, who touched me? And all denied it. And Jesus said, but someone has touched me. For I perceive that power has gone out from me. So Jesus could feel the power leaving his body. And I've heard many testimonies and my own as well from the years of praying in the hospital. I could literally sometimes feel when I placed my hands on someone that power comes from my. And then I would just be like, this is not me. What is happening? It's really like a power that comes upon you for that person. And I've seen the Lord heal. I've seen someone had a, um, a seizure and their whole body was on one side. Um, and they it got restored it <laughs> and I was so I didn't even know what was happening I was just it was too big for me I didn't I didn't I didn't even think God could do that I was laying my hands in faith as we do um, but God does really heal and when he doesn't then we still trust the the results is up to him so don't be discouraged. Do not pray for people because you don't see it. We keep on praying because he does heal. Um, miracles. Um, so this is the miracle working power of God. It's the same as healing, but it's distinct in the way that this is normally visible, this gift. So you can see it um, where healing might be in a body. A miracle would be something like someone with a too short leg or someone that's completely lame for 40 years. Um, that Peter and John also prayed for. So this would be something growing then, like a leg that was too short, it starts to grow, or an eye that wasn't in a socket and it actually starts to grow. These things happen. <laughs> it really does happen. And it happened with people like Smith Wigglesworth and um, Catherine Kuhlman. That thing starts to grow, and this is miracles, which God does. He creates because um, he is the creator. <laughs> um, as I said, normally visible. This could be instantaneous where healing sometimes takes a, a time of, of time to heal. Um, I think we can go on. Then I just the last category is the inspirational gifts. The first one here is prophecy. I call them the messengers. So this is through the Holy Spirit, they speak forth the word of God. So this is not their own understanding or their own words or their own reasoning or education. This is really God's word and it's God's message. Um, Derek Prince has a very cool scripture he referenced to. He said, when Isaac laid hands on the son and it was the wrong son, he laid hands on Jacob and spoke the blessing. When he realized it was the wrong son, he actually couldn't take back that word. That is what prophecy is. It's, it's clear, it's from God and it's set. So no one can come and say, oh, yeah, let's take this part away or this can't be or let's change it or that can't happen because it's a word that God speaks and it's set. This is also a channel um, of counsel for God's purposes. The purpose of prophecy is to speak to man on God's behalf. So you come before the people and you're speaking as God speaks through you. This is for edification, exhortation and consolation. So remember that prophecy builds up, it stirs us up and it cheers us up. This is not a dictating gift like this you should do, this should. It's not with that heart or that. Um, and then as Paul said, we're all encouraged to desire this gift actually. And I think the importance is because of what this gift does. So when people give you a prophet, you, your spirit is encouraged, your spirit is uplifted. That's why we should all desire to have this gift. And just prophecy continued that it never contradicts scripture. Um, it always uplifts Jesus. It says in Revelation that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So it will point to Jesus. It would uplift Jesus and it builds up. 
Um, Tim uh, Paul also encouraged Timothy when he gave him the charge of the church. He said, according to the prophecies that was made over you, I entrust this to you. And he actually warned him against discouragement and fear. Um, so that's why I think also it's precious, precious that we heed this gift. Two dangers could be that we despise or reject prophecy so that we don't receive it or the other part would be where we just receive it and we don't test it or judge it. It's just too dangerous. A warning is also, I've heard, but if to not use one directive prophecy as the Alpha and Omega, and that you place your whole life on that one prophecy, um, God would always confirm, it says in 2 Corinthians 13, witness of two or three a word is established. So take it back to God, let him confirm it in your own spirit, Take it to scripture, um, pray through it, don't just change your whole life because someone said one thing. Um, it, could be, it could be dangerous if we deal with it in this way. Then just the last two is the gift of tongues and the interpretation of tongues. Okay, the, so the gift of tongues is uh, also the gift of languages. So on Pentecost we saw when the Holy Spirit was poured out, this was actually the first gift that manifested. Um, so this could also be understood if it were interpreted and it works with the um, interpretation of tongues. So the purpose is similar to prophetic, that it builds up and it lifts up the church and it also delivers a message from God. Um, I also would like to see more of that in the church. Just always when a tongue is brought, it's very clear what God is saying and it's very, it's very set. So we must be open for that to God to, to speak through us through a tongue. Then the reference just explains, sometimes we don't know, we're praying and then a tongue is now brought, is it the same, who's different or what isn't. So the reference just explains the three purposes, which I find quite good, is there's a personal communion, like in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2, speak to God in mysteries, not with understanding, and it edifies himself. So this edifies us when we speak to God in this way, it builds our spirit man. So I would encourage you to do it, make it part of your... Um, alone time with him pray in the tongue um, so Paul also says he prays sometimes in the tongue he prays in the spirit um, but then his mind is unfruitful then he goes on to say he sings in the mind and he sings in the spirit and he prays in the mind and he prays in the spirit so he does both of it so you can pray with understanding thank you Jesus and then you can also pray in the spirit but um, they actually did tests. They took Christians and then they, 50 or something, and they let them just pray in the spirit to do scans on their brains to actually see what is happening. And while they were praying in the spirit, they, your brain is actually inactive. There's nothing happening <laughs> because your spirit is now connecting. And that just emphasizes to me again that we're more than a carnal or a fleshly being. We are actually created with the spirit to connect with him spiritually. Um, so when we connect in this way, don't go on to think, oh, my mind must now try to switch off your mind. Your mind shouldn't do anything. You must now connect with God and spirit. Um, and then just unknown tongues is a sign to unbelievers like we see on the day of Pentecost. So the disciples actually started to speak in tongues, but they couldn't understand what they were saying. But the people around them said, I'm hearing you speak in my mother tongue. So God would sometimes, you're on missions and God you're alone with a person. I've heard testimonies like this. And then God would give you German. Just in that moment, then you come home and you can't speak German anymore. But in that moment, he gave you so that that person could receive ministry. So that's just how faithful God is. And just the last, so the interpretation, very similar to the gift of tongues. So this would usually follow a tongue. So someone brings a tongue to the front and then this, someone would come up and interpret it. Um, it could be the same person who interprets it. If there's no one that received the interpretation, the same person that brought the tongue could do it, or it could be a different person. The person re receiving in, um, the, of the um, interpretation, they would sometimes only have an impression or a word they're experiencing or a phrase they're hearing. Sometimes they see an image, and that could be an interpretation of the tongue. So this is ways in which... Um, if you want to open, I want to, I want to be able to interpret the tongue. So <laughs> um, 
I think we must grow and that we should trust if God gives us something, say someone brings a tongue, that we should trust if he shows us an image or brings a word into our hearts, that that is him speaking and to grow in it. So this is the same as prophecy, as I said, that it edifies the church. Um, it actually says that prophecy, bring prophecy rather than a tongue, because a tongue edifies the self, but prophecy the church. But then it says, but if a tongue could be interpreted, then bring the tongue. So it's important that if a tongue is brought, that we interpret it, because only that would edify the church, not the tongue necessarily in itself. Um, okay, and then it's just very important to remember, so the gifts build up and there's always order around them. So when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you are still in control. You're not foolish, you're out of control. Um, the Spirit never takes control of a person. We must remember this, it's evil spirits that takes control, not the Holy Spirit. Um, he, would, he would always, as they say, he's a gentleman. He would, um, he would have to invite him in and, and flow with him. And God is not a con God of confusion, but of peace. So if you can't feel peace, then know that something is stirring. Something is up. <laughs> you need to ask God what is happening. Um, so in conclusion, the part I'm also very excited about is why I think the gifts is not our problem in that they are difficult. I think the gifts, for me, having flowed in them, they, they are not difficult. They are actually very simple. And I think God made it this way so that anyone can perform them, even a child. So the gifts are not difficult. They're really not difficult. It's rather faith and obedience in these things that we need to access. But I think where we get stuck is why is it needed? <laughs> I don't feel where does it fit in or why should we even do them? Um, and this is why this is so powerful for me. So Derek Prince says about the church, in Songs of Solomon 6 verse 10, he said that God made the church awesome as an army with banners. So if we can see these gifts as banners that put fear and dread in the enemies of God and deal effectively with the enemies of God. So if we can see the church as being that victorious light source that God created it to be, this army, this victorious one, um, that actually access these and live in a world with these, who actually, um, you know, in Ephesians 3, I quite had a, had a revelation while we were working through Ephesians in the church, that scripture that says that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in heavenly places. So it's through the church that the many, that God choose to make known his manifold wisdom. So it's through us that he choose to show principalities and powers out there that I'm God. It's through us. It's not going to happen <laughs> through anyone else or anything else. If we want God to be made known and to be showed strong and to be glorified, then this is why we access these gifts or why we, we should desire to walk in them is because he gave them to the church to be this army with with banners just lastly the attitude that we should have towards the gift so i think very important is desire and if you look at the greek again it actually speaks about a, a deep yearning so it's a strong emotion it's not like i hunger for for a muffin or something it's a deep emotion it's a strong emotion they say it's like yearning for a loved one so this is the way in which we should desire the gifts, almost like a yearning. We should, we should want them deeply. Um, not, it's not a fleeting thing to stir up and so it, um, and to stir it up like Paul told Timothy fan into flame. So you must actually, this is based on our will. So it won't just happen or fall out of the sky. This is something we have to stir up in us and, and allow the Holy Spirit to move, um, through us and give him that space. Ronald Bunko also says that um, the Holy Spirit is actually the hand in the glove. So we're just the glove and he's the hand performing these things, but we, we need to give him that space to, to work through us. I think lastly then, just be, as we close off, this felt it go, it went so quick now, but okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think the words that God brought was just so, um, 
again showing us that he's here. I think the song where, where um, from everlasting he came to draw near. And then for me, he left the Holy Spirit. So it almost <laughs> it says he, he, rem he chose to remain near. He didn't then go back. He came from everlasting, left us. He actually, and it says that the Holy Spirit is our inheritance of eternal life. So the Holy Spirit reminds us about that we are created for more than carnality in this life. So Jesus, these are just a few points I want us to look at. Um, I'm going to do a corporate prayer in closing for us because I believe there's two or three things I just want to address um, corporately. And then there will be time afterwards if you want to come forward and have someone pray for you. There will be people praying and open to pray for you. If any of these is, is what you want to pray for. And maybe you just want someone to personally pray over you for a touch of the spirit or rekindling. Um, so why we struggle to receive or walk in the gifts. As I said, carnality or fleshly minded. So we're given to our own appetites and desires. Um, we're self-centered. We usually, I want, I think, I feel. And not what does someone else maybe need or want or think. <laughs> Legalism is a big one as well. Um, unbelief. It's also we esteem the law higher than the spirit. So where Jesus actually healed on the Sabbath. Um, but then the Pharisees said he could not do it that way. So legalism would be you say the gift can't look like this or this can't be God or it, it's not for me or this isn't the right setup or anything like that. It's actually just unbelief and legalism that we're placing above because God can move in any situation <laughs> and he can, he can perform miracles in any situation. So being you could be uninformed, maybe unaware, so you didn't have exposure to to this or your inexperience or you're still growing maybe just accept that the Lord um, but allow yourself to grow in this and to learn more um, lack of abiding is a big one for me so that's why it was so beautiful when we connected this morning with his presence because it's through his presence that these things flow effortlessly if you connected to him you wouldn't even have to strive or work up something this would just flow from you um, so our lack of abiding, maybe you just want to say to the Lord, I'm, I want to come back to you, Lord. I want to walk with you daily, moment by moment. Um, lack of love. So maybe you feel that you don't have a love for either Jesus, the body, or our neighbor. Sometimes we, our love becomes quenched, and, and we need to rekindle that and say, Lord, but I love you. I want to do your work. I love the body. I want to love the body. Um, maybe you have hurt in some of that areas and then pride and fear of man. I think that is just some of the things I felt might hinder us. And with that, I'm actually done. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit is not done. Thank you, Isha. You, can, you were enjoying it so much you didn't. <laughs> Thank you. As you have Ponsal, um, just your minister in a song for us. I would like us to, um, so if any of that stood out for you, just keep it in your heart. You can even go home and pray about this, get your accountability partner, or you can now come to the front. But um, I want us to all stand, and if someone can get the light for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a corporate prayer over us, but I want you to not think Oh, I'm done. This is now done. I can just do going home now. I don't want it to be like that. I want you, to, and it's not me praying over you. It's us praying together. So as I pray, I want you to respond. If there's something that you agree with, say, yes, I'm sorry, Lord, or I agree with this, or forgive me for this, or thank you for this. So I want you to be responsive in the prayer. So don't just hear the words, and, but we're all going to close our eyes. And if there, there's moments where you need to raise your hand, just do that. This is a moment where we just connect with him again. Um, you know, his presence is really here and he's already met with us. So let's just close our eyes and I'll just lead us into this. Yeah, oh, thank you, Father.
Thank you, Father, that you are present here, Lord. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that you left with us as a protector, Lord, as an advocate, Lord. It's on our side, that's within us, Lord. Thank you that your Holy Spirit is within all of us, Lord. Just declare this, Lord. Oh, there's just two group, groups of people. The first is that you're actually feeling, uh, you're feeling empty. So they say the Holy Spirit is water and it's fire, but you, you feel a bit dry. You don't feel, um, we had an image in intercession where it was an ice bucket and the ice bu bucket was beginning to be filled little by little until it all was full and it actually overflowed. Um, but that is the state which God is calling us to. But, but it is real that some of us feel that only two of your pieces is full or only maybe none is full. So yeah, if that's you, just raise your hands. It's between you and God. And we just give our, our in a sense, our thirsty souls to him. Lord, we just come and we pray now, Lord. Thank you that you see our hands, Lord. That we can say, Lord, we are thirsty for you, Lord. We come as believers and we come to drink of you, as you said. And you said then rivers of living water will flow through us, Lord. We come against the unbelief or the dryness in our hearts, Lord. We believe you, Jesus. We believe that you died, Lord, on the cross. And we desire, Lord, that you fill us with your spirit, Lord, that you fill us up now, Lord, with living water, Lord. Thank you that you fill our hearts, Lord, you fill our bodies, Lord, you fill our spirits now, Lord, with your living water, Lord. We just open ourselves up, Lord, to be filled by you, Lord. Yes, Lord, thank you that you've already cut, Lord, the strings, Lord, and you're now filling us with water that truly revives, Lord. Yes, Lord, thank you that we are free to receive your living waters, Lord, that's abundant, Lord. It is abundant waters that fills our hearts now. Yes, Lord, thank you, Father, that you just fill us, Lord. Just come and fill us, Lord. In the empty spaces, Lord, in the broken places, you come and fill. You give new water, Lord. You give new water, Lord. You're our source of water, Lord. You're our source of life. Thank you, Jesus, for life springing up in us, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord. Thank you for a fire that's being rekindled, Lord. That might have been small, Lord. Thank you that you rekindle that fire now in Jesus' name, Lord. Rekindle that fire in us, Lord. Let us burn for you, Lord. And for the sake of your name, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would fan into flame, Lord. We fan into flame, Lord. That fire, Lord, and that gift. Yes, Lord. With that, just the second category. And maybe you've you've tasted these gifts or you know of them you actually have a desire to walk in them but you don't know how you don't know when or i just want you to raise your hand as a, as a sign of god i i want this I've, I've i've acknowledged that you've given me gifts just raise your hands thank you father that we just pray now lord for a obedience to your voice lord and to your spirit i pray for a openness in their spirits lord a openness in our spirits to be attentive to your spirit lord to the moving of your spirit lord open our ears and our eyes lord to see where you are moving lord and cause our hearts to obey your voice lord i pray a obedience and a great portion of faith into our hearts lord thank you that you've made us faithful over these things lord thank you that you've given these gifts lord freely lord freely you give it lord no we just receive them lord just receive your working your spirit lord thank you jesus Jesus. And lastly, Lord, we just want to repent of neglecting your Holy Spirit, Lord. Neglecting you, Lord. Placing anything higher, Lord. We say with that word that we are set apart, Lord. Come and set us apart, Lord. Yes, 
Yes, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Thank you. Forgive us, Lord. Say that your Holy Spirit is precious to us, Lord. We desire your closeness, Lord. You're with us, Lord. Lastly, I just pray, Lord, for revelation of your spirit, Lord. Revelation that we created more than just carnal, Lord. <laughs> we were created for you, Lord, and in your glory, Lord, in your image, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you drive out carnality from our minds and our hearts. In Jesus' name, Lord, that we can kill the flesh, Lord, and walk in the spirit, Lord. Walk as you've destined us to walk, Lord, in Jesus' name. Yeah, amen, Lord. Thank you that your spirit rests in us, empowers us, Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord